Alright, welcome back to Pursuit Fishing. So while I was working on that last video for my reels, my buddy messaged me and he was like, hey, you're doing another video on reels, maybe you should talk about line. So I'm gonna talk about my, uh, my line preferences. I'm gonna go through the kind of line I use the most, the brand, the size on the application. So these are just my preferences. Uh, I'm just a random dude on YouTube. I'm not a pro, so take it as you will. Okay, so uh, what, what's the type of line that I use? Well, all of them. I use braid, I use mono, I use floral. Now, I'm about 95% floral. Like, I throw floral all the time. Uh, I throw a braid for frogs, and that's it. I hate braid. I hate it. I hate it. I just don't like it. I don't like that it floats. So, for, for most applications, right? For topwater frogging, it's great that it floats, but if I'm throwing jigs, I don't like that it floats because it takes my jigs a little longer to hit bottom. I don't like how braid feels, right, on the reel. I, this is kind of weird. I don't like how it sounds. And so I, I stick with, with floral, right? And there's a pretty good argument over which is more sensitive. Uh, a lot of people argue braid to leader, right, is the most sensitivity. I think fluoro is plenty sensitive, and here's the advantage for me that fluoro has. I think fluoro transmits a better sensation when you get a bite on a slack line, right? There's, there's some interesting videos trying to prove this theory that although braid is typically a little more sensitive, that braid doesn't transmit a bite on a slack line. Like, it doesn't transmit much of, much of anything. Which to me makes sense because it's it's braided line, right? It's so soft. Uh, so a lot I fish so many jigs, and I love fishing docks and structure. When I flip that jig in there, a lot of times it's falling for me on a slack line because I'm trying to get the jig to fall straight down. If I'm not on a slack line, that jig is gonna pendulum and fall back to me. So if I flip to a dock. Rather than going right down a piling or right down even with the dock, it's falling away from the dock. So if it's 10 feet or 15 feet deep, by the time that jig hits the bottom, is it three feet away from the dock, five feet, eight feet, right? I don't know, but that's why I like fluoro. Fluoro is also, we know, right? It's harder to see underwater. Um, and I use mono for top water. The other reason I use fluoro over just mono, right? It stretches less than mono and it's thinner in diameter for the same pound test. All right, so that's my types. Uh, let's, so let's get into brand. I got a bunch of my line over here. As you saw, like red label, Seaguar red label. I throw Seaguar red label, I mean, bunches of it. So I mostly throw Seaguar red label. Everything I have in 10 pound test, 12 pound test, 15 pound test, and 20 pound test most of the time. Um, if I'm working thick cover in clear water, I'll throw uh, a Bracex. It's expensive, so I don't like to do it, but 10, 12, 15, uh, and Red Label is what I use. Red Label's inexpensive for a fluoro. It's fairly manageable, like a lot of fluoros are real stiff on the reel, they wanna come off. I think Red Label's manageable. It's been strong for me. I've caught some big fish. The, um, the six pounder at Triangle Lake, 15 pound floral, right? Normally I'd throw 17 for a swim jig, but the water was fairly clear. And so I flipped over to 15. Uh, the lilies where I was fishing weren't real thick yet. So I, I wasn't too worried about getting wrapped up in there. I throw the Invisex a bit. So, <laughs> really, the only reason I throw this is uh, Tackle Warehouse like never carries Red Label in 17 pound test. So I go to this. Uh, if they did, I probably wouldn't really use Invisex. I tried out Yozuri Top Knot. I tried it because it's it's a, a little thinner. It's a little thinner 
in diameter for the same pound test, like 16 pound is 0.013 inches thick, that's the same thickness as my 15 pound red label. But I didn't, I didn't love it, and honestly, I, I didn't give it a good enough shot, so I'm gonna try it again. My final opinion on that is still out. So for my mono, I use Maxima Ultra Green. I've used this since I was a kid. It's just what I remember. I don't know if I was like a little kid, but I just remember this being around when I'd fish with like my grandpa and stuff. I think it was this. Anyway, this is what I use. It's, it's strong for a mono and it doesn't stretch that much, right? Mono stretches, this stuff stretches, but not like ridiculously. And then Braid, Power Pro. Uh, 40 or 50 pound. I, I go back and forth, kind of depending on my mood for the year. Um, generally, I've been in Oregon throwing it on 40 pound uh, braid for frogging. This last year I went to 50, and I don't think it was necessary. Like, just where I frog, it's not... The stuff isn't so thick that I think I'm going to break off on 40 pound test, and it's a little thinner so I can cast a little further and do things easier. So I'm probably going to go back to 40 until I like start losing fish. So that was a quick run through of brands, a little bit of application. Uh, let's talk line size and what I use. I touched on this a bit in the reel video of the last one. So I throw eight pound on my spinning reel. I didn't even bring the spinning reels out for that video because I don't really fish them that much. But when I do, I throw eight pound of Seaguar Red Label. Pretty much exclusively, almost never go to six. I just don't feel like I'm ever missing bites on eight pound because they can see the line. Jumping up to 10 pound test. Uh, it's what I use, I mentioned it, on my SLX MGL and PC Fun Spark Pro. So I can be versatile, I can throw the Ned Rig, right? And that 10 pound test is still thin enough that you can cast the lighter baits. I throw my jerk baits on that. Rattle traps sometimes and crank baits sometimes. I prefer to be at 12 or 15 for those, but it'll do it. Um, I throw weightless stick baits on 10 pound tests sometimes. And not with, not with super stout like owner beast hooks, right? Just typical three or four out hooks. Uh, jumping up to 12 pound red label, I th throw jerk baits, rattle traps, right? Your typical stuff. 12 pounds kind of like, I don't use it a lot, right? I go to 12 pound when I want to throw 15, but I'm in clear water. There's a couple ponds I fish, like on some days, you can see the bottom at like 15, 18 feet. And I... I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like 15 and 17 pound test, I feel like the fish get line shy. It could just be me. That's when I use 12. But if I'm not in that boat, I'm throwing 15 pound red label or 17 pound and Vizex. Basically 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon is what I use the majority of the time. Uh, the majority of the time when I know I'm around big fish. 17 is my swim jigs. 17 or 15 is my finesse jigs. If I'm throwing pitching, uh, 15 is probably the lowest I'll go. I'll go 17 all the way up to 20. Uh, if I'm throwing flipping jigs or I'm throwing big, you know, big baits, my swim baits, my big single hook swim baits with owner beast hooks, I'm on 20. Like not going to 17, I'm on 20. Uh, that's what's on my, my reels for, for big swim baits. All right, so that's my, my quick run through of the lines I use. I'm fluorocarbon. I just, again, I'll, I'll recap. I think the fish, we know the fish don't see it as well as mono, especially as well as braid. Uh, it's thinner per pound test. I like the sensitivity. It doesn't stretch as much. And I don't like braid. I don't like tying leader knots. I don't like that it floats. I don't like that, in my opinion, it doesn't transmit a bite on slack line as well. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's why I, I, I don't really throw it. I'm pretty much all floral from eight pound to 20 pound floral. So I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, the lines I use. You know, if you have any different experiences or opinions, like I would love to hear it. So post a comment. If you liked the video, go subscribe. Thanks. Have a good day.